Hello everyone and welcome to today's session. Um, in today's webinar, we will briefly introduce what is ground penetrating, uh, ground penetrating radar to you and also share with you what POSAC can offer when it comes down to uh, selecting a GPR for your usage um, in the first half. In the second half, we will be discussing some of the common and uh, many unique applications that GPR is used in the many industries. Hi, my name is Shen. I'll be the speaker for the first half of the webinar. My colleague Augustine will take over for the second half. We are both uh, regional air sales engineers stationed in Singapore in Postag Asia office, and have uh, and both of us have helped many customers with the applications of tonight. The recording of today's webinar, inclusive of uh, the presentation, will be made available to everyone on demand. Do reach out to us if you wish to have a copies of uh, today's content. Right, we estimate the uh, webinar to complete within forty-five minutes. After these forty-five minutes, we will have a fifteen minutes Q and A session that will be open to all attendees. Please feel free to click on the Q&A tab on the bottom of the screen to write us your questions along the webinar and we'll have them answered for you at the end during the Q&A session. For those of you just joining us, welcome. Uh, without further ado, uh, let's start today's webinar. Right, so for myself, um, I'll be introducing a GPR and then for the second half, Augustine will be, Augustine will be discussing on the applications of the GPR. So um, today we have four main topics. We have uh, we will be covering the principle of GPR. We will be covering the live eco solution that we can offer, and then we will go on to to uh, discuss about uh, two the two GPR equipment that Prosec can offer, and then the last one is some of the updates that we have um, to help users uh, improve their user experience with a GPR. Right. So what is ground penetrating ground penetrating radar? So it's actually a geophysical method that uses radar pulses for subsurface imaging. So um, it actually uses uh, radar to detect uh, reflected signals from subsurface. So GPR can be used across a variety of channels. We can use it in rock, we can use it in civil engineering. As you can see on the slide, uh, we can also go to, uh, it can also be used on rock, soil, ice, pavement, and even structures. So what kind of defects or what kind of objects can it detect? It can actually act uh, it is very, very uh, sensitive to a metallic object. However, it can also detect voids and cracks if they are big enough. Right, so ground penetrating radar is used in these three core um, uh, uh, functions in the industry. We use it for SB verification for inspectors to check on the building uh, after they are built. Right, we want to verify the uh, structures are built to the standard. The next one is integrity assessment. So uh, it is used for engineering studios, it is used by engineering studios and investigation companies to maybe assess old buildings where they don't have any drawings to start with. So GPI is a good equipment for this kind of uh, application of usage. And the last one um, is for use uh, for heat prevention. So in the industry, I think uh, many uh, companies, they want to assess or even uh, to check the compressive strength of the building, right? So they will need to call uh, to, to extract core samples from buildings. So in order to extract all these cores without hitting a rebar, um, first a user has to detect all the rebar location before um, placing the rebar, uh, before placing the core implement to call on the correct area. Right. So for a GPR component, it's actually very simple. First, we have the antenna. Second, we have the encoder. And with this, um, it, it is used to uh, capture data and then eventually pass on to a data logger, in which case uh, for POSEC, we are using an iPad as our data logger. So the, um, using iPad has its uh, pros, right? So uh, we have powerful pro uh, compared, I mean, uh, together with uh, powerful software, iPad. So we have intelligent software at our fingertips. So with this uh, combination, we are able to perform many, many unique and special applications. So a very quick uh, discussion, or maybe uh, to share with you uh, how actually GPR works in capturing a uh, signal. So in this uh, image that you see, um, this is a concrete structure, and then embedded inside the concrete structure, there is a metal rebar. So um, the truck, the, the little uh, device above is uh, what we call a GPR. So as we move along the surface, right, it captures the reflected signal at every location where it moves. So when it, start, uh, when it starts to capture data at the first location, the radar um, that travels to the, uh, to the uh, specimen takes a longer time to uh, detect the signal, right? 
So um, it comes off as a, a longer time of flight duration. So in the actual data collected over at the right side, you will see a hyperbola kind of uh, imaging that actually represents um, an image, uh, for example, a rebar. Right? So um, for GPR, it detects uh, uh, the amplitude, uh, I mean the reflector signal based on the amplitude, and the amplitude is very dependent on the um, dielectric constant between the materials. For example, um, concrete and metal. Right? So um, GPR is very sensitive to metal, so you will get very good signal. Whereas uh, maybe if the uh, embedded material is uh, maybe PVC pipe, maybe you will not get a strong enough uh, signal as what you get with a uh, metallic object. Okay. Yeah, so um, what we have um, for POSEC GPRs, well, how we are different from the other GPRs in the market. So we are using a ultra wideband technology. We call it the uh, step frequency um, what does this mean? In short, uh, it's very simple. Um, in the market, if you are getting a low frequency uh, GPR, you are able to penetrate far, you can see far objects. But the thing is, you don't get good resolution near surface. On the other hand, um, on the other hand if you get a high frequency, you get very good resolution um, on near surface object, but then you lose out on the penetration. So um, uh, for users who wants to measure or detect objects from near surface to a very deep uh, depth, right? They have to get two GPRs in the past. But for us, because we are using ultra wide band, uh, for one GPR, you can expect very good resolution for near surface detection. At the same time, you don't lose out on the uh, depth penetration. So over the years, GPR has evolved a lot. Um, first, um, it came up with uh, this uh, first, uh, when, when we collect data, this is the signal and the, the screen that you see, the data that you see. Uh, this is what we call the non-migrated B scan. And over the years, and uh, with the algorithms and the pro softwares that we developed, right, uh, we move on to having B scan um, migrated view, which is uh, more clear for an untrained operator, right? And then we move on to have tomography. We can use the time slice to check on the different depth to uh, to to interpret uh, rebars or data captured at different depths as per your requirement. And then for post GPR, we also have this 3D imaging and augmented reality. So what does all this do? It helps to, uh, it, it makes your interpretation simpler. So anyone with a GPR can perform a job uh, with maybe one, two hours of training. Next, um, I will discuss, uh, share with you our ecosystem of GPR. <clears throat> so as you know, uh, mentioned earlier, um, our GPRs are wireless. So they are connected to an iPad screen uh, via Wi-Fi. So uh, with the iPad, data is collected from the probe to the iPad, and then they are stored into the cloud system. Um, Prosec cloud system is free to use, and it has unlimited space for you to store your data. Right. And how, can an iPad help you in, uh, in real life uh, scenario? So we have an iPad at work, maybe myself, I'm doing an, uh, I'm doing an inspection work at site, right? And then because I'm using iPad, I can have another body of mine or my colleague in the office, okay, connect to my iPad via TeamViewer, Zoom, Skype, any uh, social media uh, program to view my iPad. So in the office, I can have experts help me to interpret the data on site while I'm, while I'm in site. What else? I can actually instantly share all this data to anyone in the world, just with a Wi-Fi connection. I will share them the link and then they can immediately go to the site to view the data or even download the data for their further usage. Right, so for GPR, um, the most common two techniques that we use is uh, the line scan. And so in this, uh, in this uh, data, we actually went to uh, Indonesia to do a scan on the bridge. Right. So as you can see um, on the image now, it's actually the non-migrated view. Okay, it's not so clear for maybe some uh, untrained eye, but then look at this. This is uh, the migrated view of the B scan. Uh, immediately you can see the arc on the bottom, where, it's the arc, uh, where, where it shows the uh, actual bridge condition. 
And then the next one is, of course, um, the area scan where most people use uh, for uh, you know, coring application, for SBU verification. But I will show you a video. So we actually went down to site. Uh, we had a customer asking us if we can uh, help them to verify if there's any rebound structures in this column on site. So because um, the contractor that they use, uh, they, they, they did not trust them completely. So we went down to site and did a scan and here's what we found. Yeah, so we went out to site, we completed the scan in less than 30 minutes and immediately we are able to uh, advise the uh, contractor to double check this column because from the scan we are able to see a uh, very uh, small little hole at near the center of the uh, whole column and eventually they did, they hack out the, uh, the column and uh, really um, that area is missing some rebounds uh, intended in the first place. Okay, so um, next we will move on. I will move on to touch on the, the two model of GPRs that we have. Um, so on the screen on the right top corner, we have the GP8000 and on the bottom, we have the GP8008, um, the smaller CP. Okay, so our, as you can see, our instruments comes with no wire, it's totally wireless. And uh, we built the equipment, we designed the instrument based on uh, um, uh, operator needs. We built it uh, as economical, ergonomical as we can. So as you can see, um, we have extension rod, we have accessories to help users uh, do inspection. We have uh, iPad holder to fix onto the GP8000 to make inspection easier for the operator. But on the other hand, if you see um, the competitor products in the market, right, some of them, the handles are blocking their screen. So the user has to uh, maybe tilt left or even be in an awkward, awkward, awkward angle to look at the screen. Right, and it's bulky. And on the bottom right, you can see uh, the other uh, instrument in the market, they are so, they have so many wires. Right, so in the side, I think it is messy enough. We do not want uh, our own cables to, to be part of the mess, to, to, to increase uh, the, the mess. So ours, um, you can be assured that it's wireless. I mean, uh, you can be, uh, it will be tidy when you go to site. So just comparison between the two GPS, why do we have these two GPS? Can one do the job of, uh, in, which the other, in, which, in which the other can't? So if you look at the first four points, they are basically the same. Right? They can both uh, detect rebounds, they can both uh, detect post tension cables, they can detect other objects which are non metallic too. Right? And then we can also detect big points. Um, the thing is, uh, on the left side, the GP8000, because uh, it comes with an ultra-wide band from 0 0.2 to uh, 4 gigahertz, it can actually penetrate to, uh, to that of uh, near to 80 cm. Right? On the other hand, the smaller one, because its uh, frequency is uh, from 0 0.4 to 6 gigahertz, um, we actually tested and then we we found that it can be up, it can be good up to 65 cm. Um, the 50 cm here is uh, because we tried on the real side condition and we haven't had a case where we have tried 65 cm. 
right? And then for the GP8000, its additional features is that it has a live wire uh, detection capability, right? So if uh, in any case you want to check on a uh, building that is existing, you want to do coring job, you want to make sure that you don't want to hit all these live wires also. So this will come um, very handy if uh, that is the application that you're looking for, right? And then uh, for the smaller GP8800 on the right, if you look at the last three, uh, last three uh, points, uh, because of its uh, small, a uh, physic, phys uh, because of its small physic, right? We can let it move on the curved surfaces. On the bottom right, you can see the photos over there, and it can also go into confined spaces. And then later on, we will also discuss a little bit about cross polarize, cross polarization, right? And then, of course, uh, both of our GPS, they have a fantastic resolution and they are good for any coring jobs out there. Okay, a short video to introduce our GP8800. Um, just uh, maybe uh, take note of how easily you can switch the wheels from side to side. Right, uh, for this uh, video that you see towards the end, uh, we actually went down to site. Uh, this customer had a problem. They uh, did a coring job and they hit three bars in the column structure. Right, so we were asked to help. Uh, we brought down our GP8800 where it can fit into the uh, small area uh, that you can see over there. Right, so we did a scan for them and we found the rebar location as you can see on the screen right now. Right, so uh, I'm not sure how or maybe what equipment that they use. Maybe their GPR is uh, too bulky. They can't fit into this corner uh, to inspect the whole column condition. Right, so in this case, a uh, GP8800 will be a good choice of the instrument to use. So in a way, um, both, GP8, uh, both GP8000 and the GP8800 has their own purpose and uh, unique applications. Right. So um, a little bit on uh, what is cross-polarization. Usually when we are doing a normal GPR scan, um, the object that we detect is usually perpendicular to the scan direction, right? like this. So this is the only thing or maybe most of the things you can detect. The object that is perpendicular to your scan direction. However, when we are doing cross polarization, right, we tend to be able to detect objects that are parallel or even uh, going along your scan direction like this. So with this, we are able to detect um, objects which are parallel. For example, if you are inspecting a rebar mesh, you can't see the uh, maybe the horizontal uh, rebar. So you want to do a cross polarized scan to, to look at the rebar. It is also very useful okay, to see non-metallic uh, non objects. Uh, with cross polarization, uh, non-metallic non objects uh, tends to come out uh, a little bit more obvious than a valid object. Okay, so this is a scan that we did. Uh, as you can see on the top left, uh, the non-migrated scan. Um, it's the same scan at the same area, right? Um, the normal scan and the cross-polarized scan. So for the normal scan, you're actually um, seeing the uh, cross-sectional view of uh, the rebars. So you can see all these hyperbolas on the screen, right? So they are actually, um, uh, rebars that are perpendicular to the scan axis. 
but you are not able to see the, hard, the vertical uh, the rebar over here. So all these are actually cross-sectional rebars, right? So for this, we did a scan from here to here. Over here in the screen, you are eventually able to see the, um, uh, the rebar, which is parallel to the uh, scan direction. Also, you can actually see a little hint of uh, indication of uh, the a, uh, perpendicular rebar location. Right. Okay, so um, with this, I would like to maybe do a short demo. Uh, my colleague Augustine will be uh, sharing with you a live demo to uh, show you a live uh, uh, data to let you have an experience. Right, Augustine? Yeah, so you can stop sharing the screen. Okay, okay. perfect. So I'm Augustine. Uh, I'm going to give a live demo how uh, we talk about instant cross polarization. So the view is in the parallel direction with my testing direction. I can very nicely trigger the measurement. So you can see the screen is collecting the data very nicely instantly. So in this way, I do a normal scan. I can have a first layer, second layer. But in this way, I'm not able to look at the the back wall clearly. Maybe I can do a second line scan over here. So you can see this data is collecting by a normal direction scan. So to keep it simple, we can just simply follow the view as you can see. Right? So I can get the Get a scan at the same area, I will continue the measurement. So this way, when we do the scan, we call cross polarization. So you can see now the back wall become very clear. Did you see that? Just now I couldn't see the back wall, but first layer and second layer, which is perpendicular to my test location, is super clear. Right? And for this line, why I can't see the the back wall, right, for second line, because some uh, a river along my measurement line is blocked the most of signal. So this is my live demo. Thank you, Sun. Yes, so you can continue. Thank you, Augustine. Let me just go back to the slide. Okay, so um, in my last part of the presentation, I want to share with you uh, what we have brought on board um, since uh, we launched the GPR two years back. Okay, we have been doing a continuous improvement and we want to make the user, uh, user experience uh, more and more, uh, better and better, right? Okay. Okay, so some updates. So recently we brought a GPR slice into our inventory. So um, GPR slice is a very powerful software, uh, which is uh, uh, used very widely in the industry by um, advanced users for them to interpret data, uh, for them to filter results. Right. So with the GPR slice, you can actually um, do customization or even uh, editing to uh, suit the, uh, the scan contour, but you can also have uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, imaging techniques. I mean, you can also see I 3D display in the GPR slice, right? And also, you are able to see ISO uh, surface interpretation for interpretation. So with all this, um, our GPR is compatible and it's uh, within our fleet of uh, equipment that we can offer. Right? So for us, uh, GPR is a one-stop solution. Right, so uh, if there's any questions or if there's any requirement, please feel free to uh, drop us an email and we will be glad to help you in the applications. Right, we can also help you to find out what is the best technique uh, for your inspection. Okay, so for the uh, second half of the presentation, uh, my colleague Augustine will be sharing with you more on uh, the very common applications that you see in the industry um, using GPR and also some of the very uh, uh, more unique uh, techniques that uh, is less commonly seen. So, uh, Augustine? 
I'll pass the pass it to you. Augustine, your mic. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Remind me. Uh, my name is Augustine. Uh, thank you very much. I'm very honored to have the second session to share some past experience from our past work. Uh, over here, I really, uh, I have to say thank you to some of our partner to to my uh, good customer. For example, MAK is our local leading specialist consultant. Uh, the full name called MAEK Consulting. So they are in Singapore is a very professional and provide all these uh, technical services on multiple specialists, including building material, chemistry, enrollment material, architecture, all these kind of different, uh, including civil and structural engineer job. So in the past, we have a lot of interaction. We have uh, some uh, case study together. Uh, not only MEK over here, uh, also I, I will give some example from uh, Indonesia, from Philippine customer, some from India, also including uh, some, some result from Australia. So it, it will be a very interesting share session. And in future, I'd like to say, if you have some uh, interesting work, you, you, I'd like to have this kind of interaction with you as well. So uh, as a short introduction, so I, I think now, uh, now all of us were staying at home, uh, still performing our job. I really miss my workplace. I, I, live, I found this picture last night. I would like to share this picture so you can see in the past, we do a lot of R&D job uh, in, uh, in this kind of new technique for this kind of AR, did you see a, a uh, rebar leaf out from a uh, testing test beside, right? So all this one, we will have some uh, experience sharing later how we can use this kind of new technique. Before we, we really go ahead with some other application, I really want to have a short interaction with all the participants, right? Some of you visit our office, you may be familiar with this uh, small concrete block. So in this concrete block, we build with three rebar and one hollow pipe. And this is a very typical radar diagram at the right hand side, right? Basically, we can see uh, some rebar over here, right? Some uh, GPR as per, you may easily interpret this data. But over here, I would like to have a short interaction with all of you. Uh, so the first question, maybe you can find this uh, uh, questionnaire for you to give us an answer, right? For the question, while the radar scan over on the rebar, right? The radar wave start from concrete surface until the rebar. Will the radar speed going faster or going slower? So thank you very much. Some of you already gave the answer. Yes, the radar speed will slow down easily. That's because the dielectric constant of the different material will determine the speed of the radar easily. Thank you. So I have a second question for you to answer. So the second question will be, what the radar speed when scan in the concrete, right? So the the subsurface of the concrete is the air. So the radar wave will go faster when from the concrete surface to another uh, air surface. Yes, some of you get the right answer. The radar speed will go up. It goes too faster. So from here, you can see exactly some difference from the uh, radar priority, for example, when we scan cross over the rebar and scan cross over the hollow pipe, right? So from this uh, uh, test result, you can see there's uh, three rebar, one, two, three. One of them I already marked as a rebar, right? So there's an interface from the 
concrete to air, at least interface is from concrete to rebar. So you can see uh, 180 degree this kind of inversion, right? So white, black, white, let's intersect data represent metallic object. So if you see uh, black, white, black, then let's uh, perceive data represent a non-metallic object. So we can see from this uh, radar, row data, yes, exactly. You can see three rebar and one of the hollow pipe. So you can see another thing is uh, the hollow pipe and the back wall has a uh, same polarity. So this is uh, just a, a small uh, interaction with all of you and some of you already know the result, especially who familiar with our system. So next one, uh, to continue some topic, uh, how we use this uh, uh, project GP8800, I give some example first one. Uh, really thank you for Taiwan uh, partner, Yen Strong, Mr. Candy give this uh, very fantastic result. So this is a hollow pipe, uh, sorry, hollow column, right? So you can see a scan can be done from the inner curved surface or outer surface, right? At least a GP8800, which is really suitable for this kind of curvature surface. So top, let's uh, uh, row data, below let's uh, migrate data. You can find the back wall. Of course, you can do a polarity measurement to get a better back wall reflection, right? So this is a measurement for first one. Uh, when we talk about column, and this data actually also provided by MAEK consulting company. And we go to the site together and we conduct some measurement. So I'd like to share uh, this measurement. First of all, you can look at how we conduct this uh, normal scan with a salt review. And you can see the condition from the below is very worse. Right? Uh, the concrete is too tolerant. So this, this is the way how we live up for a vertical scan with a normal scan, and this is a test result. For example, we can look at the macro view laser, rebar layout from the first layer, and possible laser, a sec, a below layer rebar layout, let's uh, total backward. And next one is a B scan image, which is a non macro view. We can see all this uh, cross section rebar very clear, even uh, a rebar along the measurement line, right? So along the measurement direction, we also can see the rebar in our vertical scan, at least a uh, total Bernician depth. And some of us already asked what's our Bernician depth. Later, we can continue this question. Uh, just now, beginning the video, we can notice is a concrete very serious deterioration at the bottom of the column. At least a reflection may be present how is a, a concrete condition in the radar diagram, right? From left hand side, it really gave you an indication how bad is a concrete, especially we couldn't see the a total reflection from the back wall. So this is something we can see from the radar diagram. So how about a cross polarization measurement, right? So uh, this is a cross polarization measurement. So for example, we, we scan uh, just uh, instantly till you view 90 degree, we can have this kind of measurement result. For example, over here, I can see a um, rebar super clear. It's a constant line, right? So this, this rebar definitely is along your measurement line. Uh, of course, there's um, uh, close to Behind the ear, there's another rebar over here, and a total thickness of the concrete. So this is a macro review. Uh, I'd like to share another example, which is we do a scan uh, uh, in a horizontal direction. So left hand side, there's a, a measurement with a, a non macro. Uh, oh, sorry. So both measurement is done in cross polarity. So first measurement was measured at the below uh, of the column, and second measurement, uh, upper one, is measured at the top of the column. So the, the result in non macro view, we can easily to see a first layer rebar, a total thickness uh, over here, right? You can see the total thickness reflection, 
Um, over here, I can see some beyond the uh, column, there's a metal frame, uh, including the metal banner, right? That's uh, uh, some further reflection from the, from the back. At least a Mac review. Uh, now really go to our topic. I'd like to share some uh, um, application from the past, including reverse scan, post tensioning scan, uh, the effects, uh, slab thickness. Uh, also, we have some uh, inter interesting content like the moisture content or color content. Uh, because the timing is really short, we, we have a few other applications to share in future. So now let's look at Reba. Uh, this data was done in China, uh, Shanghai Re uh, Concrete Research Center. Actually, there's a competition among different uh, com uh, different GPR uh, manufacturer. And Porsche gave the best performance. So over here, there's a, a five different size of rebar, from bigger to small, from left to right. Uh, the total slab thickness is about 15 cm. Uh, 5 cm uh, is the first layer, and 10 cm depth, that's the second layer rebar. And you can look at the a test result, right? So this, uh, this kind of vertical resolution to present different kind of rebar per site, which is uh, this uh, uh, super performance. In term, we have this uh, step frequency continue with. It's too many example when we talk about rebars, right? We have so many rebar scan in the past. But in this case, how about wet, white mass? It's also common use for, for slab, right? To have a better performance at a single crack uh, on, on the concrete surface. So in this case, after the result, we can easily project the result uh, like an AR function. So you can see this uh, rebar mass, how it looks like, right? Uh, basically this uh, spacing only 5 cm. And mostly, uh, uh, I don't say which product, mostly for most uh, GPR, for this kind of congest, Rebar mass, you may not penetrate or you may not have a further field reflection from the radar diagram. Uh, I'm interested to find something over this test result. I play a video how I interpret this result. So, this uh, result after the test, you just swap on the screen, you can instantly have a 3D view. But over here, uh, we can see the the rebar mesh at the 5 cm depth. So we can further increase the time gain, com uh, time gain composition, which to amplify the further field object. So over here, I can find a, a clear pipe, right? So for this pipe, actually locate around uh, 18 cm from the radar diagram. Uh, also further increase some uh, background removal filter. So we can see the rebar from surface much more clear and smooth. So all here is a pipe. And from uh, uh, before we do the small crease, we know that's a metallic. So I, I talked to the building owner, they say that's a uh, water pipe running below, that's a metal pipe. Uh, over here, we, we can see a black, white, black, that's a total slab thickness. So total slab thickness after the dielectric constant calibration, so we can see it's about 27. So the first layer reply is somewhere about 5 cm, right? So this is a test result for the first one. Uh, I'd like to share some example from the past, how we do the post tensioning slab measurement. So this kind of post tensioning slab uh, for buildings, uh, uses uh, is huge, right, to increase the load. Uh, and you can see how the structure looks like. Uh, for example, for this kind of slab, uh, we scan over, actually next example, we scan over from the beam to next beam location. And you can easily to see over the beam, uh, there's another post tensioning cable. And for this kind of congest rebar layout, it's not easy job for GPR to pick up all the details, but you can see how is a super performance from Porsche instrument? So I leave up the two results, which is a Mac review on top, non-Mac review below, right? So you can see all the rebar 
from the non Magri view, right? There's a uh, cover from the beam location, that's the first layer rebar, and including second layer rebar. And for this case, actually, there's no top layer, only the bottom layer rebar uh, below the post testing cable. Uh, we can easily to see the spacing about this the bigger uh, hyperbola is about one and a half meter spacing. Uh, uh, total is about uh, 12 or 15 post tensioning cable is located. Important, you can see as clear as possible this uh, post tensioning you can find under the river next, right? And also possible you can find this kind of post tensioning cable uh, in between the two river mesh. So this uh, result we collect in Singapore is uh, actually research center and when we're doing the exhibition over there. So from this result, we can see first layer around 15 cm this, uh, because this has a tall layer, a plaster layer, of course, increase uh, uh, the cover of the rebar. But we also can see a small interface around 10 cm, right? Then on top, there be some other facade material. Oh, over here, we can see the whole geometry of the, this uh, 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 post tensioning which is along the measurement line. And important, we can have a second layer rebar and a total slab thickness about this uh, measurement. Uh, we also have conduct some uh, pipe location, right? Not only the uh, post tensioning. So this, uh, some example is talking about some conduits. And this one was uh, done in my hometown, right? As in China. Uh, Liaoning, Shenyang. So uh, for this structure, actually I can zoom in, but we keep it short. First, we can look at the uh, first layer rebar. Uh, the metal conduit is in between uh, two rebar somewhere and total slab thickness. Also somewhere you can possible to locate some uh, second layer rebar, right? So this is uh, non mac review. And now you can understand, right? So this uh, similar uh, polarity from white black white, so less a uh, metallic object. Metallic object in concrete and easily we can identify less a uh, river. Oh, this a uh, very famous block we use for our master training, right? And you see, uh, maybe there's a low gas motorbike beside. So we can see there's a whole PVC pipe beside, uh, inside this uh, irregular irregular concrete slab. So we can see how is the test result over here. So we can see the hyperpolar polarity is totally different with just now the metallic pipe or metallic conduit. And it's the exactly same uh, polarity with a uh, uh, back wall, right? At 40 cm. So we can easily swipe on the screen, have our Mac review, and uh, all the full pack easily finder. Uh, you can do some uh, fine tune on the game, and later you can lift up your report easily. So this is uh, result for hollow pipe, either is a uh, 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 metallic or non-metallic object. Oh, next one, uh, also some uh, interesting scan on this kind of hollow coal slab. And this kind of hollow coal slab uh, is also commonly used for this kind of construction. And you can see uh, basically this kind of slab uh, is built somewhere is uh, more than 200 meters in the precast factory. And based on the building design, they will cut uh, to recreate lens. This is a test result, right? And you can see the hollow pipe location, and you can see the rebar location. A uh, interesting thing to, to find this kind of hollow pipe, basically hollow pipe is kind of pre-stretched slab. So for this result, actually has a two layer, right? On top layer has a, actually after constru uh, uh, construction of the hollow pipe, it's still pouring on the, a small thin layer of uh, uh, concrete pavement. So over here we can see a uh, interface from the, non review, we can see an interface. Let's refer to the a small concrete cover, and in between there's a rebar. 
after that, there's a hollow pipe. So hollow pipe, we can have the reflector from a air, right? Then give you a representation in the black, white, black, this kind of presentation. So this is a hollow pipe scan, first one. And can be another kind of hollow pipe. It uses a, a high density uh, polyethylene, this kind of ball uh, bag inside the concrete, not only to reduce the weight of the structure, but also give a lot, uh, some other advantage. So anti noise, and for some uh, seismic sex, uh, design, they also use this kind of. So actually, this result was uh, provided by Yen Strong. Uh, in, in Taiwan, it's also quite common to use this kind of structure design. I also make a video to see how this result looks like. So basically over here, I can see a clear reflector from the met metallic, right? Let's refer to the river mass. And below here, there's a, a three hollow uh, PE ball over there, right? Just beside the river in between the spacing and give you black web. This, we use a, a signal, uh, total signal reflection we call uh, envelope. We use a peak or envelope to locate the rebar location or object location. And you can see a nine ball in this uh, 60 by 60 area scan, and there's a rebar layout uh, just beside the balls, right? So this uh, example on hollow core slab or some uh, uh, hollow slab. Uh, next example, I'd like to share some, uh, some work before when we test uh, or some data provided by our Italy partner, PASI, or some result we together work with uh, MAEK, right? So this kind of monster reward. Uh, this wall design you can see from the brick disc is kind of header bond, a monster reward. So typically the, the, this kind of wall is about 20 to 24 uh, cm, this kind of thing, uh, based on the, the brick wall, uh, the brick disc. Uh, uh, lens, right? So uh, we can look at this data also quite interesting. You can see how they scan cross over the concrete wall horizontally and beginning from the around two meter to three meter, we have uh, some signal loss. And uh, later on, I process some, uh, I use some uh, additional built-in filter to find out Actually, we still have a reflector from the total thickness, which we correspond to later uh, this uh, reflector. And the problem from this uh, uh, two to three meter section actually has a higher moisture, I suspect for that. And we can see some reflector from the brick itself. Less, uh, I, I'd like to say less uh, half of the brick, maybe uh, the brick disc is broken in halfway, right? So overall, you can have this kind of uh, GPR diagram to look at your data, analyze your data. So this is the first example. Uh, second example is provided by MEK. We go to the site. Uh, this is a very famous building since 1901. So it's more than 100 years. So for this kind of historic building, how we conserve in future, we need to do uh, NDT. Uh, this kind of investigation. Uh, it, it actually, it's a uh, Sun Yin Shan Nanyang Memory Hall. So in this way, we actually has, we already has no some problem at the center board. Uh, for the GPR radar diagram, really give uh, evidence. Uh, for this wall, we know side wall is in dry condition, and this uh, center wall in very white condition. Uh, there's some, uh, uh, material tests already carried on before. Uh, from there, we, we, based on the material test, we know how is the moisture content. We know some other chemical content inside, right? Uh, for this test result, this uh, macro review and non macro review, I will go for step by step to explain further. 
So look at the first two sections. This is the first scan we call M1. This is a marker one, and this is a marker two. I refer to this individual location we test. So you can see for this uh, small wall at the side is a total thickness about 300. And we can easily use or, or find the back wall and do this kind of calibration. And we also can identify the thicker wall at center, which is the 500 roughly. Take notes why I say this uh, drywall, because that electric constant based on our calibration only give you 7.2. That's a dry condition, uh, monstrous wall. And we look at the uh, marker three and marker four, right? So first, a uh, radar diagram become very blue. And secondly, the back wall become larger and the small back wall. So basically, we use a reflector from the small back wall and the larger back wall. We, we can calibrate the dielectric constant easily. It's almost 19. So you, you can see this kind of um, uh, column, uh, especially for historical buildings, very important how we can counter um, for for future, right? So we should consider uh, based on this kind of evidence, we can easily instantly has uh, this kind of the data interpretation on site. Uh, this data also provided by NEK, we did together and Marie, uh, Malay Conservation Center in Singapore. So uh, in some monster river, we have some problem. We can easily see this uh, salt crystal on the surface. So this kind of salt related problem in brick monster or we cause some uh, area can see some uh, dark, dark mark at certain height, or you can find some plaster uh, chipping off from the surface. Uh, of course, this will give a structural deterioration or damage. So you can see the scan is far from, from here, right? Cross over the, the surface already. Just a short demo to, uh, luckily I recall how Sun performed the measurement. So over here, I don't look at the front one. We can look at the back, right? As a very strong signal from the back wall. But in between, less because the uh, coral contact eating the radar energy. So in this way, actually we don't have a good penetration. Uh, our radar load data become very blurred. So in this way, we can easily identify the affect area from the radar uh, scan. We just simply do a few vertical scan, horizontal scan. We can easily find out where is the real problem area. Uh, next one, I will talk a little bit on our AR function, right? We, we have touched on AR function for, for quite long uh, since uh, uh, 2018. So we have this uh, AR function embedded to our GPR inspection system. And some people really interest. Uh, is I'd like to say it's kind of joy when we do an AR scan. Uh, this result was prepared by PCTE. So for concrete payment, we can easily find this kind of serious crack. But what's the root cause? It can be some other cause. But for this particular case, uh, the engineer after interpreter data, especially project the AR image on the real test location, they can easily find this to be a joint concrete slab. So this uh, reinforced joint was displacement, right? This kind of displacement of the rebar mass as a real cause uh, for this uh, serious crack on the concrete pavement. So thank you very much. There's some data sharing along today's section about our application in the past, right? Uh, uh, from the Sun's uh, presentation, we also have a lot of uh, interesting information. So before end our session, 
uh, end of my session, I'd like to have a last question from all the participation, right? So for example, after today learning, so with your interest on our GPR, so you need us to contact you further or you want to contact us further, please uh, help us for your uh, answer. Thank you very much. Uh, so same time, if you have any question, please leave your question in question and answer section. Uh, we have some expert behind to answer your question later. Okay, I will at least uh, practice. Thank you very much. Um, Augustine, I think we got a very interesting question um, from Mr. Bim Wong. Suppose the column size is uh, 300 by 300 uh, mm, I guess. Is it mm. possible to do a scan and what is the minimum dimension required for a GPR scan? Oh, actually we did a lot of this kind of, um, not saying 300 by 300, just for example, 200 by 1000. You can easily set up your scan from the screen now because now our grid size is flexible. Uh, but maximum area can go is 60 meters for square meters. Yeah. Yeah, so, so we actually have no limitation on the uh, size that you want to measure. You can even go down to uh, 100 by 100 also, we have no issue. And another one. Um, for I think uh, some of uh, I think this uh, question is asking about the uh, color that he sees on our three D image. Do you want to explain a little bit more? I think uh, the color that. Oh okay. Uh, same time, uh, some can you explain the question at the same time? I try to find some example from my iPad. Yeah, so uh, when we are in this uh, 3D image or even uh, augmented reality, right, you can yeah. see different color on Augustine's screen right now, the purple, the cyan, and the yellow color. Oh, that actually uh, we have recently uh, added on as a feature of our GPR. Um, they actually represent the different depth. So meaning you can have a total of four different colors. You can actually adjust them at different depths. So for example, you want uh, 0 to 10 mm to be yellow. So maybe the first layer rebar will be a yellow color and second layer rebar from 10 to 20 mm is set as purple. So you will have the second layer rebar as purple. So this is a better uh, visualization for inspector uh, out there or have a better interpretation uh, for their inspection. So obviously. Okay, uh, a moment. Uh, I've led to share my screen and probably you can have a better look. So can you see my screen about yes. my iPad? Yeah, yes. okay. Mm. I, okay, how about the color depth, right? Yeah. So basically we do a lot of this kind of area scan with a uh, flexible area and this uh, maximum area just now I explained before. So you really can go to mass area like a 16 meter square. Of course the far size are a little bit big. Uh, in this way, uh, I just, maybe I can explain further. Um, so we can leave up the cursor, look at um, this kind of, we call that view or time slice view. You can look at the different layer, right? So in different depth, so of course this uh, are quite complex slab. We have a different layer of rebars. Uh, of course I can adjust the depth of the different color code, right? For example, I'm interested to look at the first layer in yellow color, and second layer in purple color, and later on is a blue color and light green color. So this is a result, right? Of course, if I know where's my test location, I can leave my AR marker 
like I can scan on the AR map, and instantly I can have this uh, measurement result on the test location. I, I think some of uh, my, my screen is not clear now. Okay, I will reshare this. Okay, so as mentioned, you, you really can define yourself on the different depth with the different colors. Yep. Um, I think we also have a question from Ms. Yuki, but then uh, this question is actually more, uh, it's not directed at GPR. He is asking um, how confident is POSEC to define the actual diameter, uh, actual rebar diameter. So I think um, for GPR, it is not the uh, best instrument out there to uh, detect the di rebar diameter. Uh, rebar diameter is actually using uh, eddy current technology. And we have uh, two instruments in our portfolio, which is the Prophoscope and Prophometer, which is able to give you an accurate cover depth, uh, rebar diameter, and also, uh, uh, yeah. So it, it can actually uh, determine the cover depth and rebar diameter for you. Okay, I think uh, we have answered all of the questions from the floor. I think uh, if you have any more questions, we can be reached at info-asia at screeningeagle.com. Uh, please feel free to drop us an email in any applications that we can help. Uh, we will see you at the next seminar. Thank you. Thank you.